months. I mean, that's really what this election is about. You guys helped out in, in, in August in a big way. She had a very, very, very tough uh, uh, and competitive primary. Welcome, State Auditor Rebecca Otto! We're really here to thank you for everything you have done up until today and everything you're going to do over the next five point something days here. I think the governor's been a great governor, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I think he's made a lot of great decisions for this state, but one of the best decisions I think he made is adding our next speaker to the ticket because she is filled with passion and enthusiasm and excitement for not only getting out the vote, but for making a difference for Minnesotans. It's my honor to introduce the next Lieutenant Governor of the state of Minnesota, Tina Smith! As the Governor's Chief of Staff, Tina Smith has learned a lot from Mark Dayton and a lot about very close elections and voter polls. And he gets kind of a faraway look in his eyes and he says, well, it's like a hockey game and I'm the goalie and we're one point up and we've got two minutes left and anything could happen. And he's right. He's absolutely right. But when I look out on this room, I know that I am not only hopeful, but realistic when I say that I know that we are going to win in five days. And here's why. I know that everyone in this room, just like most people in Minnesota, believe what Paul Wellstone always said, that we all do better when we all do better. I say that. Everyone wants to say it together. We all do better when we all do better. Now, I'm telling you, if you think about everything that you can do in the next five days to put that value into action, just think of it. I mean, how many of you can, how many of you can door knock to put that value into action in the next, all right. How many of you can make a few phone calls to put that value into action? How many of you can vote to put that value into action? Yeah. How many of you have already voted to put that value into action? Most of you know he comes from a really long line of public servants, people who contributed to this state in a great way. And he's here to, to represent uh, Al Franken. Please give a great round of applause to the mayor of St. Paul, Chris Coleman. that things in Minnesota have changed under Governor Dayton's leadership. The fact that the mayor of St. Paul has been allowed to speak in Hopkins yeah. all you need to know about how things have changed in this state. So thank you for letting me out here and uh, it's, it's great to be here. Because we are one big region, we are one big state, and we all need to stick together for progress. Uh, we all need to stick together to make uh, Minnesota continue to be strong, to re-elect the DFL ticket, to re-elect the House members in the, in the State House so that we can continue to move the state forward. Uh, and I am just honored to be a part of that. Because I, I read this article the other day, it was an analysis of the race, that this brilliant thinker said, well, the Democrats are going to try to run on their record of accomplishment and success. And that's just not going to play in swing districts. <laughs> uh, and I don't know exactly how that analysis works, but it's, it's, it strikes me as kind of odd uh, that you can say that success uh, and accomplishment and four years of incredible leadership under Governor Dayton, two years blocking those uh, draconian policies that the Republicans kept on trying to push forward, and then two years of completely changing things around, refunding schools, making sure that everyone is treated equally on all things, including marriage. Look, I get to travel across the country. I'm president of the National League of Cities. I see what communities are working. I see what states are working, and I see which ones aren't. And the ones that aren't working are the ones that are failing to invest in their future. And under Governor Dayton, the leadership in the Senate and in the House, we are moving forward. But I'm here to talk about and on behalf for Al Franken. And so channeling my inner Al, I thought, what would Al say if he were here today? Well, he would say, have you met my grandson? <laughs> because quite frankly, that's all Al wants to talk about. But when you see Joe, you can understand why he would want to talk about him all the time. Isn't he beautiful? Thompson, thank you so much for being here. But I think Al would want to talk a little bit about some of the things that he's accomplished as a U.S. Senator. First of all, as Hillary Clinton referred to him the other day, to go into the Senate and not to be a show horse, but to be a workhorse. To be one of the hardest working members of the Senate from day one. And I can attest, because I was up in the boundary waters with Al last year. We were in, we had paddled in for about eight hours. 
for some reason, the staffer suggested he bring a, cellular, a, a, a satellite phone. And he gets a call and he says, Al, you got to come back. Uh, we're going to have a vote tomorrow, and you got to get back on a plane. So we literally turned around. We had just taken all of our stuff out of our canoe. We were about to set up tent, and we paddled back. So I know firsthand how hard Al works because by the end of about 12 hours of paddling and portaging, uh, Al was still uh, humping that uh, pack across the portages, working hard because he needed to get back to Washington, D.C. to represent the folks of Minnesota. And so physically and mentally, Al is giving everything he's got for the people of the state of Minnesota. And he's fighting on behalf of our students by making sure that we have decent, uh, uh, the ability to refinance our, lo our loans, for those of us that have Woo! children, this matters. Yeah. All Americans are trying to, to take away special tax breaks for people like hedge fund managers that are making billions of dollars but paying taxes at a rate half of those that the average working uh, person in this country is paying. He's working on behalf of making Minnesota a great state. And he's working very hard in partnership with Senator Klobuchar. He's doing a great job. He's working across the aisle. Students and graduates should be able to take advantage of lower interest rates and refinance their loans. 312 votes, votes are not going to be enough, folks. We need to make sure that we spend the next five days getting out door knocking, phone calling, lit dropping, talking to our neighbors. We can vote now. The election isn't on Tuesday. That's the end of the election. The election's been going on for the last couple of weeks. It's going on this week. Get out and vote if you haven't already. If you go out and vote this weekend, then you can be, uh, on Tuesday, you can spend your whole day uh, working on behalf of re-electing the DFL majority in the House, re-electing Governor Dayton, and sending out Franken back to Washington. Folks, you have worked hard these last couple of months. Don't give up. Don't rest. Don't relax. Don't even take time off for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's a silly, contrived holiday. <laughs> I, I don't say that in an open, by the way. Uh, we continue, continue to move forward. I know we can do it. Let's get out there and work hard. Thank you. The next congresswoman from the 3rd District, Sharon Sutter! At this time, four years ago, Harry Reid was down by five, written off. They're thinking about who's going to be the next leader of the Senate. But I heard some whispers, and they said, don't count Harry Reid out. Harry Reid has the best ground game. And we know where Harry Reid is today, and I plan on being up there with him uh, come the first of the year. Yeah. This election is about you. It's about all of us together. It's about what we come together and do every day. And I know you talked about what Eric Paulson uh, doesn't do. He's voted 54 times to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. I don't want him to have that 55th chance. <laughs> he voted against allowing us to raise Pell Grants for our students. I don't want him to make that permanent. What I want to do is to take Minnesota values to Washington. And with your help, Democratic Visions is independently crafted by volunteers, mostly Democrats, from Eden Prairie, Minnetonka, Edina, and Bloomington.